Hi everybody, my name is Lindsay. Welcome or welcome back to my bookish and writing channel. So right now I'm in the midst of one of the busiest seasons of my life so far and for very exciting reasons. In less than three months I'm getting married and in about one month I'm moving from the USA to Canada to finally close the long distance between my fiance and I. So my life is very very busy right now because I'm planning a wedding and also planning to move to a different country. It's a lot going on at once and so my to-do list has expanded quite a bit, which means at this point in time, the amount of time I have to dedicate to writing is very small. So I wanted to make this video today, not only for myself, to give myself some reminders of how to move forward over the next three months with my writing, but also for any of you who are struggling with finding time to write, or more importantly, I think, struggling with the reality of not having very much time to write. I have outlined my zero pressure writing plan for the next three months, and I am excited to share it all with you. So here we go. Here's step number one. Step number one is daydream. I am very good at this. Yeah. While I'm doing other tasks that take time, such as addressing invitations or doing the laundry, I am going to be thinking a lot about my story. My story, by the way, is a middle grade fantasy novel about a 13 year old witch and her cat. I'm going to visualize new or revised scenes. I'm going to think about my characters, add depth to them, and make them believable. I'm going to paint a very clear mental picture of my setting and then later think about how I can better transfer that painting into words. Then after I'm done daydreaming, I'm going to take any notes about my daydreams either on the notes app on my phone or on the notion app on my phone so that I don't forget anything that I thought about. Daydreaming about my story is how I'm going to be spending most of my writing time this next quarter, and I honestly think that it is the perfect time for me to prioritize the daydreaming aspect of writing. Not only because it's busy season, but also because after busy season ends, I am planning on diving into draft two. I'm also excited that I'm giving myself more time to daydream about my story rather than work on my story because I feel like if I daydream more about my story, I'm going to be more excited to write it. And I'm going to be more prepared to revise it three months from now. Step number two, learn. In the next three months, I am also going to be spending time learning more about how to strengthen my craft. So one thing I've been doing is I finally watched Arcane for the first time, and the second time I rewatched it right after I watched it for the first time. I thought it was so good. It's one of my favorite shows now. And what I've been doing while I do other tasks, like fold laundry for example, I've been watching YouTube videos about Arcane and why the characters and the story and the setting are so exceptionally written and what sort of writing techniques are used. First of all, I just love watching video essays about my favorite movies and TV shows but also it's been giving me a lot of great advice about how to make my writing better. Another way that I'm learning about writing is by listening to podcasts, either while I'm driving or going for a run. My top three favorite writing podcasts at the moment are How to Win Nano, Write or Die, and Soulful Screenwriting, which I will link in the description. I highly recommend all of them and I have learned something new and something very meaningful from all of these podcasts. Step number three, which is odd but intentional is try not to do any actual writing unless inspiration suddenly strikes and I cannot resist. Like I said, this is my no pressure writing plan and so to take the pressure off of myself and just enjoy the writing process over the next three months, I am not giving myself any type of writing schedule. I'm also kind of sort of resisting the actual writing and revising at the moment. I am only writing if inspiration strikes I get an idea and I absolutely have to write it right now. I do realize that not a lot of actual writing is going to happen in the next three months because of this, but that is intentional. In order to give my second draft its best chance, I am avoiding writing for the next three months and spending more time in the planning stages, in the daydreaming stages, in the learning about the writing process stages. Once I've spent a significant amount of time planning my story and making my writing better and getting a clearer vision in my head about what my story is, who my characters are, and what I'm trying to achieve, I believe that my second draft is going to be all the better for it. When I finally do have a regular writing routine and I sit down to finally create draft two, I'm going to feel so much more prepared and so much more excited to do it. Good things take time and I definitely want to take time on this book because I want it to be good. Step number four, 
change my mindset. During past busy seasons of my life, I have gotten in a very negative headspace about my writing, which can all be summed up in the line of, I'll never get my book done. This time, I am not falling into that pattern. I am going to shift my mindset into something more true and positive, which is, I will finish my book. I am choosing to embrace the slow burn process of writing a book that I love and believe in. In order for my book to progress and in order to remain in a healthy headspace when I write, I have to let go of all negative thoughts regarding my writing. For me, the repetitive negative thoughts that have entered my mind in the past include, I'll never finish my book, which is the top one. Another one is, I thought I'd be a published author by now. And another one is, I went to school for writing and I have nothing to show for it. I am finally closing the door to these past negative, repetitive thoughts that have entered my brain and kept me from writing well because it, they didn't make me feel good at all. And so I'm finally closing the door and not letting these thoughts inside. Like I said before, they do nothing for me except put me in a bad mood. So I'm just done thinking about them. I'm done thinking those thoughts. And step number five, most importantly, is take time to relax. So with my ADHD, how I sometimes often get big things done is I hyper focus on a project and lose sleep and don't take breaks, refuse to take breaks. And then when it's all done, I spend a day or so as a potato on the couch because I become so burnt out over just zoning in on that thing until it's done and refusing to take any breaks. Right now in this phase of life and honestly, I should be doing this moving forward for the rest of my life. I am trying to resist this pattern. The reason why I have embraced this pattern a lot in the past is because when I am in hyper focus, it's beautiful. I feel like I can get things done. I am motivated to get things done and not let anything get in my way, but it's not a healthy thing to do because I don't take breaks. I lose sleep. I get burnt out, like I said. And then after I'm done with that thing, I have no energy to do anything for like a day or two. And the reason I like to embrace being in hyper-focus mode is because I also fall into the opposite of hyper-focus mode, which I cannot remember what it's called, but it's basically having no focus at all to do anything, which happens to me as well. And I would like to achieve some sort of balance between the two things. So I am going to try to focus on things every day and also take breaks every day. Maybe take an hour to catch up on a show or catch up on a book, do something non-productive but fun and relaxing, make sure I get enough sleep every day. So that is what I'm trying to do right now. I know I sound a little bit nervous and that is because I am, but I think I can do it if I just if I just try, I think I can do it. It is busy season, but I do not want to burn myself out. And when I am ready to jump back into draft two, I want to be well rested for it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful to you. In the comments, let's keep the conversation going. Please let me know what your tips are during busy seasons for your writing. What do you do for your writing when you feel like you don't have very much time to work on it? Also, let me know what kind of current projects you're working on or thinking of working on. What kind of genres do you write in? let me know. And if you'd like to leave an emoji in the comments just for fun or to let me know that you're here, please leave me your favorite cloud emoji to represent the beauty of daydreaming. I'll see you all again soon with another video. Bye everybody!